Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. We're continuing on the leak hunt on this 1998 Jeep TJ. Probably one of my least favorite things to do is leak repairs because you just take it apart and put it back together. And today we're gonna do the rear axle on the Jeep TJ, which is a Dana 35. These have a C-clip that holds the axle in, which means we gotta take the differential cover off. We don't have to take the pinion out, but we do have to take the cover off. So more gear oil smells, yay. But you see this, this pin here? I need to get that out. I don't remember what size it is. I'm hoping it's a, I was hoping it was a 5 16th. Maybe it's an eight millimeter. No, nope. quarter, it might be a quarter inch. Sure enough, it's a quarter inch. So it's, it's it, you never need to tighten this too much. It just, its sole job is to hold this pin in. So you take that off. It's a slow process. Okay. Then this pin comes out. See that? Okay. And you can spin the spin it. Alright, so now you push the axles in. See that? There's one C-clip. Oh, it fell in my oil. You see that one's already even fallen out. Okay, that's the other one. So with the C-clips out, now I can pull the axles out. I'd already loosened up the uh, drum, so this should come off easy, but it usually seizes right here on the, on the ring on the outside of the axle or like straight to the axle face. So it's good to put anti-seize. Like you can see how rusty it gets in there. And this is like not even a bad state for that kind of stuff. So this should pull right out. Yeah, there you go. So all kinds of tools you can use to get this out. I happen to have purchased a slide hammer somewhere along the line. So I'm gonna use that. You just wanna make sure you don't mar any surfaces or screw up the bearing that's behind there. One thing that's odd about this is normally the flange side, like the lip goes towards the oil you're trying to keep out. And this was put in like this. So I'm wondering if I actually put these in backwards, which isn't entirely impossible. I'll have to look up the proper orientation for those. Okay, we're at the point now. I'm gonna clean up the uh, surfaces on the differential, just wipe up inside the bearing race or you know where the, where the seal sits and then get the new seals put in. I, I confirmed that I did have my seals in backwards and the way I know that is that the seals actually, well, I looked it up, but I didn't even have to because when I got the new seals, they're different and they tell you which way it goes. So this is the old seal, that's the profile, and this is the new seal, sorry. This is the new seal and you see it's got this ring around it, this lip, so you can't put it in backwards, but it's the same outer diameter. So this will go into the pat, pat, pat. Uh, this doesn't have the, sometimes when you get a seal, it'll have the, the it looks like paint, but that's actually like a hardened uh, RTV that self seals. This doesn't have that. 
So I'm gonna probably just put a really thin coat of RTV. This is a kind of a controversial subject. Some guys say don't do it. I'm just gonna put a, like a super thin skim coat of RTV just in case if there's any marring inside of the, um, inside of where this seals, it fills that hole. And then I'll also take some very fine cloth and just buff where the, um, where the axle sits on here. Some guys say pack this with grease so that this spring, I don't know if you can see, you see that tension spring in there? They say pack this crevice with grease to keep that spring from coming out. I've never actually had that happen. I never even thought of it. I guess theoretically it could happen. I have some grease, so I'll probably do that. I'm gonna take some acetone. I'm gonna rub down the inside of this. Okay, I'm gonna rub down the outside of this. So both surfaces are totally clean of, of anything other than metal. This is just Loctite RTV, but I don't know if there's any difference. So again, just a super, super thin coat, like a skim coat of RTV here. Almost like just to make the, it makes it, the metal look dirty. Again, I'm just filling in those tiny, tiny imperfections. The trick here is gonna be not dropping it on the ground with all this gunk on it because then it's gonna pick up all the crap from the garage floor, which we definitely do not want to happen. And then just try to evenly drive it in there. Good, that's seated now. Uh, I'm gonna go do the other side, but I'm not gonna show that, and then I'm gonna come back and do the axle. This is the area that seal rides on. You can actually see all the marks from the bearings and stuff, and that's what a 380,000 mile axle looks like. So I have some 1200 grit paper. I'm just gonna hit this with brake clean, clean the whole axle off, because when you put it in, everything goes past that seal until it gets to that point. So you want your axle to be clean, and that to be just buffed, like roughed up with a, you know, either Scotch Brite or a, you know, 600, 1200 grit sandpaper. 1200. Wrap it around. It's probably a little long. Okay. Wrap it around. Just Grab a clean part of the paper towel, wipe off any of the stuff that took off. Okay, now she goes back in. Try to support as much of the axle as you can and stay off of the seal as much as you can. And then you should get to the point where you hit the differential. Oh, there you go. There you go, easy peasy. So you push it all the way in so that you can get the C-clips in from the back side. So it goes there. There you go, that's one C-clip in. Oh. Okay, so now that that's in, those won't fall out. Hear that? Oh my God, there's like dirt and stuff in here. Oh, that must be from when I was cleaning the, uh... I need to get some brake clean on this. Excuse me, guys. All right, where was I? This is what keeps that C-clips thing. So make sure 
sure that's oriented properly. Get this in here. All right, there you go. Now it's the long, lonely process of threading that in. Okay, that's in. I'm gonna put the RTV around here, pop the cover on, and then I have to fill it with gear oil and friction modifier because of the posi. And you know how tall these gears are? 3.07. Crazy gearing on this thing. Such highway gearing. But it's great for long trips. So I'm leaving it alone. See how I just basically made it dirty? That's how I like it. This is what it looks like. I get the sun and not move it around too much. That's the tricky part here. I'm gonna tighten all, I'm gonna put them all in and tighten them up. Okay, finished uh, torquing this down. Gave it the beans, not all the beans, but a fair amount of beans. So that's all tight. I'm gonna let that cure for overnight. And um, yeah, and then I'll fill it tomorrow or whenever I finish this. Now, clean and reassemble the brakes. I know this seems like a lot, but I'm not done. But I've got a thick, fatty layer on there. I'm gonna go and rub it all off. I'll leave the right amount on there. Boom. Tires back on, rear axle seal job is done, other than filling the differential fluid, which I will not forget because I have to fill the front one also. But if you didn't have to do a front one, set yourself a tape somewhere on the steering wheel or something so you don't drive off with no juice in your rear diff. I haven't made that mistake before. But obviously I did make some mistakes on this video. I put the seals in backwards originally when I did this job the first time and I'm suffering the consequence of it. But that's two leaks down. Um, I have the front seals, but I'm just waiting on a bearing puller for the front differential. Uh, I rigged something up for my 20-ton uh, press. I made a tool for that many, many seasons ago to take the bearings off of a differential. I'm getting a little too old to take risks like that. So I just bit the bullet and bought a puller and I'll show that the next time when I finish the uh, front, uh, front seal video. And then we can get to the engine and the transmission which is gonna be super fun.